The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 25th of October, 10.06, and we are about to Eastern Time, and we're looking at the Dow 21 at 35,698. Really fascinating when I went through all the charts over the weekend, and certainly for my subscribers to my call, you know, I did that webinar on Tuesday. I stopped it just a, just a little before my... my uh, the charts that I had already notated and everything just before the end I, I because we were running out of time but I, I wanted to finish up talking about the VIX we did that and then I said uh, uh, to subscribers the next day that I'll be following up um, when the archive is there and on Saturday in my in my webinar sorry in my video that I do for the overview I'll finish up those slides, which is what I did. And one of the things that we were looking at is that so many charts have gone like the Dow to this leg D. In the chat wave methodology, we're always looking from a an identifiable low bar to count each successively higher high, to note to notate them alphabetically in sequence. On the upside, it's upper letter, uppercase letters, and the downside is lowercase letters, just to identify the trend. We are looking at the chance of going all the way to seven peaks to the upside, but it's at that fourth highest peak, peak D, we label it, A, B, C, D, that other things can happen. And that's exactly what we're looking at right now. Look, the Dow has made a leg D at 35,765. One of the reasons why we're long is that we looked at it as the technicals were improving. It kept on bumping into that uh, right here. The Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. The repellent zone can give you a one to one to the upside if it breaks out. Uh, it, it's done that. We've taken just a little bit off as it went to that leg D, but now I'm starting to look at it and say, well, there are a lot of things going on. So let's just discuss those things. I suspect the day is so young, we're not even <laughs> we're 30, what, 38 minutes into the session. So it's impossible to discuss uh, as if it was a closing bar what this candle is going to do. But I think we're real close to some kind of a short-term digestive phase, just a short-term. It doesn't have to be more than uh, three days, five days. If it does pull back, it doesn't have to. I'm just saying this is where I'm, I always get a little bit cautious in leg D in the Chapman methodology. But wait a minute. The diamonds, the Dow diamonds, that's the trading vehicle, has made leg E. It could reset, both of these could recycle for a Chapman Wave instant restart. But at this particular point, to have a restart and suggest that we could go to another four peaks higher over the coming, going, and that would take us into, it would definitely take us into November. It's a possibility, but I think we are more likely to have some kind of a digestive phase. That's just my thinking. At this particular point, no real action towards that. We're still long. We grabbed along. In fact, I, we've got stocks that could be in the 300, 400, 500, 600 area, dollar area. Not the point. We've also got stocks that are in single digits. And today we grabbed a single digit stock. I liked it. I've liked it a lot. We missed a big move to the upside over the weekend. I, and I, I showed that this is still um, looking good. So it, it closed at, I think it was 850, 851 or 8.50, $8.50 on Friday. Pre-market, it was up quite a bit. I said, no, no, no. We're going to try to pull, buy a pullback below uh, a certain level. Uh, at this point, we said $8.51. We were fortunate. The print low is 850. The um, the pre-market low was a little bit lower. They're just a couple of pennies lower, but we managed to get it. And my target was that I wanted to see this go from the 850 area to go to touch the nine dollars. It needed to get to nine dollars and nine dollars quickly. So it's done that this morning. It's now at about eight dollars and ninety-four cents, up about five five percent. This is one of the, the screamer stocks that we talk about. The days young. Anything can happen. It's already gotten to that leg D that was missing. These Ds are so important in the Chapman methodology. I have no idea whether it's going to succeed or not, but I did one, and I know it's late. 
But I, I looked at it saying, if this particular, in the energy area, if this particular stock starts to garner strength from here, it could turn that whole 850 to 830 area into support. That's the way I'm looking at it, eight dollars that is. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at uh, everything right now. What are your risk rewards? What what are the areas that are still working? Uh, over the weekend, I looked at uh, investors' business daily stocks. Uh, some of them, uh, I, I, some of them I hadn't heard of before. Um, what was this BLD? Let me just check. Is that one BLD? Yeah, BLD. This is top build corporation install and distribute insulation and building materials. I mean, let's face it, this is the time for that. And at a spectacular move just recently from the 200 period moving average at 200, where to 250s is trading right now at 245. It's made a peak C. I could have grabbed one of, something like this. I just didn't want subscribers at this particular point to be spending that kind of money. Of course, you could buy 10 shares. You don't have to buy more than that. But that wasn't the point. The point was to try to identify in this particular phase right now where we are, what we are doing, what, what are the risks and where we want to be very careful. All right, just with that said, let me go to um, the next chart. I want to look at the S&P and I want to discuss that because I'm taking a little time today to discuss what I'm expecting here and in during the week. So my suspicion is that the S&P is making a peak D. What do I mean by that? I mean that there's a chance that there is no new high today, a peak C that is. There is no new high today it's one letter behind the Dow. It should go to a D based on everything we're looking at. Not in the short term, the short, very, very near term. We've got the E mini that just went in the one minute chart to a peak E at about 9.30, slumps down from a high of the day of 45.48, and it slumps down to the 45.29s. Has a big bounce. And where does it go to? Peak D, and now it's pulling back at peak D, but that might just be a sideways consolidation. I'm not sure about that. Shouldn't be too deep if this is a peak C coming up, and I'm still expecting a leg D by maybe tomorrow or the next day. So as it stands right now, I just want to do something at this particular point. We haven't got that. We haven't got that. All right. So long-legged doji candle for leg C on Friday in the S&P. SPY is exactly the same. What's interesting is that the Dow Diamonds, Diamonds are in E. The S&P and, and, and the SPY are in sync, not the Dow and the Dow Diamonds. That's very interesting. So are a little further ahead in the Diamonds going to a leg E. Ha! More importantly, what we're looking at is the QQQ. Oh, so where would I be looking at? At 453 in the SPY. I know people like to look at the SPY. I think the 451 to 449 area is kind of the support this week. But actually, what I'm looking at is in a very short term, this should just go. I don't know if it'll take at Friday's low of 451.05. I think we just kind of meander right now. And then we pop to D tomorrow. And then I think we've got to be somewhat careful. Let's go to the QQQ. This is the NDX 100 trading vehicle, triple Qs. And uh, we're looking at a peak B that was formed. The one to one says it could go all the way to 380. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, it's kind of struggling right here. And as I'm looking at it, I'm saying it's lagging. I think the Qs are going to continue to lag. Do they test the all-time high? There's no reason why they shouldn't, but I still think that that's what we're looking at at the moment. Uh, uh, Tommy Jr. was talking about uh, Tesla just earlier on uh, in his show, and Tesla right now is at an all-time high. All-time high. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi right, everyone, we're back. Dow's up 48, Oops, it's a little more now. It's up 51, and s and is up 7. We're looking at uh, IWM, which is the Russell 2000. Finally seeing a little strength here. This is now a leg. Is this a leg E? But it looks very good. Leg E uh, within the context of the rectangle going from the lower part of the halfway mark to the upper part. Uh, nice action. In fact, let's see. I said, I think it's about 50-50. If I drew a midpoint right here into the rectangle just there, right? I'm doing it visually, so that's about where I do it. Right there. In fact, I could raise it just a fraction. And you'll see that the number of bars on the upside to the number of the bars on the downside ugh, actually favors the upside. Mm, the big spikes to the downside are big, but the, the, the actual pressure points with the market closing on a weekly basis above the trend line says more more price movement to the upside very good so i suspect that we will get to a leg d in the iwm it's made a peak c1 c2 what do we what does that mean it means that it just missed by a point or so just by a fraction going to a leg d and i usually call that as a, i call that as a peak c and even more importantly it suggests that there's a magnet there at the at the C's level, that peak C, and I, I suspect we will get to a leg D at some point. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to talk about here. Whoops, the SMHs. The SMHs are the semiconductor you know, ETF. Peak C is really lagging, lagging a lot, just like the Qs are. And that's why I'm saying the semiconductor, I believe that the chip shortage could come to some kind of a, a negative climax over the coming weeks and then i would not be surprised in the first quarter of 2022 there's almost like a glut a glut of chips uh, but how does that play out you never know how this is going to play out we look at this chip shortage chip shortage 2021 has just been basically almost every other month higher highs so you can't we can't discuss this in a rational way to say we know exactly what's going on. The chip shortage was a very selective chip shortage. Money has been going into the, to putting, <clears throat> certainly in the automobile industry, now we're finding out what's happening. There are a lot of uh, high-end cars and there are a lot of low-end cars that are having the chips pushed so that they can market 
the sales where you get nothing or you pretty much have to go to the higher end so they can, can push the prices up. And one of the reasons why I think we're seeing the prices uh, like a General Motors up at most recent highs, not all time highs, but recent highs is because of that very fact that prices are being pushed up. But at a certain point, you need inventory. There's no question about it. And that will show up. And then I think what we're looking at is that sometime in 2022, we might find that uh, we've resolved some of that. They'll do it in a very selective way. It might take time. But yes, absolutely. I think the chip shortages are coming to some kind of a head. And uh, we're about to find out uh, exactly which companies were doing the right thing amongst their uh, dealers. And that is sending off cars that are probably in the middle using up whatever chips they've got and not selectively try to push the higher end so that people really have to people are paying thousands more for for, for automobiles um they're, they're no as far as i can tell there are probably no discounts because what they're saying is we'll take your trade and we'll give you a good price the good price that they give you is not what you get could get in the real market if you sold it yourself sometimes it's two three four five thousand dollars difference so this is going to be a very complex phase all right let's go go back to our story what we want, really want to look at is if you're talking about interest rates oh 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 interest rates let me show you this chart this is a chart that i show subscribers to my opening call on saturday in my saturday overview webinar webinar video and uh this is the chart of the 30 the 10 and the five-year yields white is the 30 tyx uh, T and X is the 10 year and F V X. Come on, come on, is the five year. Look at the five year. You would not believe how steep the five year has gone. Hello, anybody home? Uh oh. Hello, <laughs> anybody home? Uh oh. Let me see if I can move to a different chart. No, yes, I can. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, good. So look at this. Look at the, the cyan color five year. Look how it's broken out. A, B, leg C. We're only in leg at peak B in the in the 30 year. And we're at A, I believe that this is a peak. Oh, it's so tiny. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. 1186 and 11. I'm moving it to the right. It's not, it's not showing. There it is. Uh, there we are. 1180, 1166. And then we've got, okay, 1385 is what I'm looking at in 1386. So this is a leg C. Yes, sir. This is a leg C. So five years of leg C in the, in the daily chart, in the yields, that's the five year uh, FVX, cyan color yield. This is the 10, the brown is the 10 year yield TNX. In, at, at, in leg C, unless it makes no new high this week, it makes it a peak C. And peak B in the 30 year, big discrepancy. Look how close they're getting. They're getting that squash. I love to see that. Um, and then we'll talk about what it means. But in the meantime, look at the wood, the iShares, Global Timber and Forest ETF, just sideways, not breaking down, not breaking up. And the same thing with the uh, ho uh, the, bull, the this is the housing, Philadelphia Housing Index. It is acting quite nicely. It's in a second arch formation. Um, let's see, on a one month or, or ROC basis, okay, okay. two year up, 22 basis, five year, 35. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, it's a steepening of the curve. And uh, all, all I can say is we're going to, when the yields curve steepens, it often makes the market very nervous. But over the last year, that hasn't had the same effect as usual. But we'll be watching it very closely. It's a closed workspace. Thank you. We're done there. Let's get back to our story. I want to take a, a little, another moment here before the break to say uh, the TLT is down 14 cents at 143.99, but it's in the lower band. It seems to me that yields are going to be so important over the coming two weeks. Uh, sorry, two months. Um, if there's a break below 139 in the TLT, that the yields will be screaming higher. If there is a push into the 140. We're at 144, 147s, that's a lot. But if you go to 147s, yields just come down and says, don't worry about me, I'm just stuck in a range. 
we'll be we're looking at that. Let's just look at the crude oil. Crude oil. Crude oil is a, a, okay. So look at this. I love to draw channels. I teach that in my webinars all the time. I don't want to make this messy, but I'm just for demonstration purposes. I'm making that green. I'm making that red. That's your Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Well, pink, actually. I like to make the inside pink. And we're there right now. I'm not going to do the bottom because you've got a nine period moving average. You've got the 14 period moving average. You've got the trend line. I don't have to change color. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, the crude oil is bumping into resistance. The unbalanced volume, the blue unbalanced volume is making a little M-shaped pattern. It's getting a little toppy. Relative strength is good, but a little weaker than it was. Magdi's outstanding. Stochastic's excellent at 92%. How does this pull back? I need to talk about crude oil. Super smooth return. Basil Chapman. Tiger Tick Mission Tower. Dow's down 10. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. We're looking at the Dow, down five, S&P's up uh, six, and we're looking at high-grade copper. High-grade copper at 4.52. I believe this is going to I need another day, uh, or at least I need another price movement a little bit lower, and then I feel confident in saying that that's a peak D at 4.6855. Uh, that was around about the 18th, 19th of the, of the month, and I am looking at this as in the cup formation in the weekly chart as being a gray leg B because the MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. It's at 0% right now. And stochastic is only at 66. on balance volume has been pretty good. So all I can say is that copper is in play 
but it's kind of struggling to make a new recovery high. And uh, most importantly, I like to put copper together with wood. That's the uh, iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. And this is suggesting that there is international uh, uh, strengthening in the economies. But at the same time, there is a stuck attitude towards this. It's not breaking out. And if it does break out, that's going to be really important. Uh, the, other, the other thing that is going to be quite important here is... <clears throat> How is how's the XLF doing? That's the financials, and it is benefiting from higher yields. So it's in leg D, and this is what I'm saying. The reason why I'm getting just a little bit cautious here, I haven't gone short or anything, any any position, still long positions. Um, and one of the reasons is when yields go higher, it isn't the only thing, but it's a really big help for the financials. And of course, the financials aren't just financials. They aren't just making loans. They're doing all sorts of things that we don't even know about. Of course, we always find out what they were, what they were doing when the crash comes. But there's no sign yet anywhere close that there should be a crash in the XLF, Select uh, S&P Financial Spider Fund. I've only got a leg C in the weekly chart. But at the same time, I do think it's becoming a little overbought. Uh, leg D, that's all. But the MACD is good. Stochastics at 96 per 95 percent. That's fabulous. On balance volume is not over over sold, over bought or anything like that. It's pretty good. Relative strength is showing strength. So I think this is still in play. And as I've said before, I love the financials. Uh, our our uh, bank stock that we have for subscribers to open and call in the 31s is now at the 47s area. Nice, a really nice gain. Now, what's really important here is how does, for instance, let's just use Goldman Sachs. As an example, Goldman is under its all-time high of 428.76 uh, that was made back in the beginning of September. It, it dropped sharply to 370. That's a 50 point. That's about a 12, 13 percent uh, decline. And then it goes peak A, B, C, and here it is again in leg D. This is why I'm saying I'm becoming a little, a little not nervous. I don't want to say nervous because I, I still see a lot of stocks acting really well. I'm starting to see a lot of stocks getting to this leg D, E, either at, just under, or just above the all-time highs. And it just says to me, stocks that make all-time highs tend to continue. doesn't stop them from having some kind of a, a bit of a pullback. And that's kind of what I'm anticipating at this particular point. That we're getting closer and closer to that. Uh, Chip, let's see. Paul says, um, the chip supply will follow the collapsing economy. Stay dry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think it's quite. Uh, that's a little glib. I know that. I don't think it's going to be quite that easy or simple. Uh, there's a lot going on here. A uh, question came in about a uh, radio show question. Uh, let's see. Oh, another question as well about UNG. All right. That, well, let me just see. UNG. UNG came first. I'll do that. Uh, Basil, what does this say? First, thanks for your newsletter. I am a new subscriber. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I would like you to review your thoughts on UNG. I opened a half position to test the waters. I plan to hold this in my retirement account through spring. My thoughts were to add on strength and need help where I might add a stop on the way up or to protect loss on the way down. I will be ordering your book too, to better understand your techniques again. Thanks for all you do. I am in UNG at 1814. I will be listening today, Joe in Tampa. So Joe, let's just do this UNG. Now that uh, that's the natural gas, here we go, UNG. It's the vehicle, United States Natural Gas Fund. It's a good, oh, I thought I had notated this. All right, I have notated NG. I don't know why I haven't notated UNG, but it's, it has exactly the same pattern. So UNG, just to be clear, had, you see these prices here? You see how they're getting obliterated by the, the block of the candles? The reason is it gets smoothed out. I'm looking at the continuous contract. So it always gets smoothed out. Nothing changes about, about the pattern. Nothing changes about the notation of the peaks. Nothing changes about anything the technicals, nothing other than because it gets smoothed out, uh, you're looking at the price change. So whatever the price was uh, a couple of weeks ago on the 6th of October, on that most recent high of uh, $6.647, um, now it could have been different on that day. 
All right, but the pattern's exactly the same. So what we've got here is one, two, three, four, five, six bars to this little cup shape lower high pattern, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it is. It's seven bars to the upside. I happen to think that natural gas, I was talking to someone uh, yesterday about this, saying, you know, they, ever since that pipeline, what a, the administration, I don't know how they assessed this, I don't know what they did, but ever since uh, they, just on the day of, the first day as president, um, Biden just obliterated everything. I, I personally would rather try to handle the aspect of fracking and all these things in some kind of, even if it's a legislative way, so that we become independent. You've got to make some sacrifice to be independent of other countries, surely. And now we be, once again depend on other countries. So that's a little political spiel. I have to talk about that because that absolutely is an issue here because uh, crude oil is, what, we're 50% higher than we were. So this is an issue. And it's, it is obviously also a political issue. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it politically. So how that handles is not my business. It's my, the result is my business. But I'm just talking about it as part of the equation when you're looking at everything. So I'm kind of with you, Joe. I think that natural gas, at least for the next, I don't know about the spring, but at least for this phase, we should see higher prices in natural gas. This candle in the monthly chart in gray leg B Oh, no, it's the proper leg B now because the MACD's at, uh, MACD's strong stochastics at 87%. On balance volume is not too great. But yeah, this is in fact a buy mode that says it should go to a C and a D. So I'm with you. How you handle sort of the, the, the smaller trades is really going to be important. So let's go to your UNG. Maybe during the break, I'll get to, uh, to notate this uh, um, actual UNG chart. So uh, you asked me about UNG, and I'm going to give you UNG. Why is it not going there? Click, click. Oh, because I kept typing it on the chart. <laughs> UNG, what a strange thing. Okay, you've just broken this downtrend line. The day is young, so we can only say at this particular moment, as we're speaking at 1982, you've broken above Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. There it is. And now it has to act as a propellant zone of 18.76. You're in at 18 point, I think what you said, 14. Joe, so this is, I, I, I want to be, I want to do this because actually I had a couple of calls. I had my own questions over the weekend about exactly this. I'll take some time. We've got the break. I'll do the chart and talk about it with chapter notation. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk 
risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. We're looking at UNG, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund. The monthly chart is a new uh, uh, leg B. It's done this before where the technicals were okay, but what happened was in the previous big spike, look, it went to a peak ABCD way back in 2016 to 2017, I think it was maybe December or 16 or January, and then it went to PD and it made an arch formation and pulled back. And then it had another rally from about the 19s area all the way to 40, just about 40 at a peak B minus. And yet, the stochastic didn't get to 80%. It failed. That's a really good clue that this is not, there's no inner strength. There's not sustainability. Now what it's done is gone in the monthly chart to a leg B with a long-legged doji candle. So that was a real whoopee uh, so far, very whoopee few weeks in October. But it did make a new recovery high. The, the real highs that you want to look at is the high of 22.81. Uh, 20, uh, that is in... November of 2019 and September of 2019, I went to 2340. That would be my upside target. I could draw a left side, right side price time match. Uh, let's, I could do it now, amazing. And that says within two months, certainly by January, there should be a test of the upper level. That's in the 23s and it's at 19 right now. Of course, that could happen in hours, but I'm just saying this is my left side, right side price time match. Uh, and most importantly, this is the first time that the technicals in the monthly chart have seen the stochastic actually get above 80% to 89%. Uh, I think that that's really good. And so far, it's flat, but it's a monthly chart, so we can't really tell. Look at the weekly chart. It's gone from a, a, a trough at uh, just above $8. What was it? $8 and... 22 cents on the first, uh, that's the first week of January of this year, went to peak A, peak B, peak C. Then it arched over but held really nicely in the ninth. And then what did it do? It went to a leg D with the Chapman Wave instant restart. So this could be called E slash A, F slash B, and we're at G slash C with the MACD strong stochastic now pulling back at 68%, a hint to say there's, there's some kind of internal failure, but the on-balance volume is still good, and the 9 is still way above the 14. That is fabulous strength. So I like what we're looking at. I'm taking a little time here. I want to do it for myself. I want to do it for subscribers if they're watching, and I want to do it uh, for Joe because he's already in it, and he's got a little bit of a profit uh, about, what is it, um, no, more, a little more. It's almost a two-point price. This is a very nice profit, in fact. So you've got to have about an 8 or 9% gain. What I am looking at here is what happens with this potential head, head and shoulders pattern. Well, my, the technicals are suggesting on the daily chart that this is a big help. The fact that it gapped up today, it's so $1.44 up. 19.82, if we can have a follow through, if there's even just a touch of this uh, high of the 14th, which is at 20.57 in the next two weeks, and we treat this Chapman Wave inside track 
Now it's a propellant. It was a repellent zone as some kind of a trampoline. It shouldn't even get there. The nine period moving average is 1876. The maximum it should get is within the within the gap up today. Gap up low is so far 1954. I'd even give it 1920 to 1897. That's the area. I don't want to see a close below that. Otherwise, it's liable to fail. But if it holds, and for whatever reason, I don't care what the reason is, if natural gas is even able to spike into the 20.30 area, preferably closing near there, then I think what we're looking at is natural gas has acted really well. I just want to show you this here. Look at crude oil. Look at that steady move up. You see the channel, the way channels work, the way up channel, channel wave inside track, repellent zone works. Look how many times it's hit that and pulled back. And yet it's not fading at all. See the way the MACD is hinting that it wants to turn down, but it hasn't yet. See the way the stochastics at 91%, the on balance volume is hinting that it's really close to some kind of a dip. That's all, just a dip. Even that, like that red candle gave it a dip. That's all. But what's really important is that that weekly chart, I have to consider a, an alternate wave count, and that's the MACD is 97%. The on-balance volumes are tad overbought. The, sorry, the MACD is strong. The stochastics are 97%. Monthly chart has got the V-shaped pattern. What was the high? And, of course, this keeps changing. So that whatever the high is, it's the front high that we can take for now. And that was the uh, 85, 85 level. Uh, back in, in October of last year. Today's high is 85.41. We're almost there in the V-shaped recovery to the double top. So oil is very close to some kind of, a, just because it's bumping into a barrier, it needs to pull back before it can build enough energy to break out. But this is the area we're watching closely. So I want to put it together, going back to the natural gas, the UNG. UNG is playing catch up. And that's the way I want you to think of it, that they they're only in sync in trend, but they're not in sync in percentages or, or, or chart formations. Not that much. I like UNG. I think it's acting really well. I think it's in play. That's one of the reasons why the, the, the particular vehicle that we chose today to go along, which is in the energy sector, but it's not oil, it's not natural gas. I think that's a, the other alternate areas are going to play catch up to the oil. That's just the way I'm thinking. I think you're right. What's the key support on a very short term basis? Well, your 1818 or 1811, whatever it is, your entry point, that should be sacrosanct right now. I don't, I don't see a reason why it should come back to that level. I think there could be a little bit of a pullback and then another bounce. And it's after that bounce that we need to say, is the pattern going to be a rectangle formation? Is it going to be a new cup formation? Is it a double top with, with a, not a double top? Is it a head and shoulders pattern? Whatever it is, I want to give it another day or two. But so far, you're in the right area right at this moment. Perfect. This is looking well. Uh, hold on. And, and we'll talk about where to add and what to do. But this is, let's just treat this as the first day of the week. As a gap up in natural gas is occurring, let's see if there's follow through to the upside there. All right. Uh, next question I got was FXI. If I could just look at FXI. Yeah, FXI is at peak D, leg D, it could be a peak D, it's a nice bounce, it needs much more to the iShares, this is the uh, large cap China ETF. I'm, I'm looking at this and saying, nice rebound, I discussed this was a possibility, but I really need to see follow through by, the, by Friday, I'm giving it all five days to close above 43.23. Is at 42.26. 43.23 is the 200 period moving average. I want to see two closes above 43.67. And then I'm going to say to you, aha, China's having more than a rebound. This could actually be persistent, or else it suddenly starts to decline. All right. Hope that, that fulfills the questions there. Uh, natural gas, I've been told the sentiment, BKKT. Questions? LNG. Oh, I haven't looked at LNG. That was one on my favorite list, and I completely forgot to put it in the favorite list. LNG is at 107. This is Chenier Energy. I think this is a peak A, peak B, peak C. I, I think it looks it looks good. I'm next in the in the uh, in the weekly chart. 
It does look good. It could digest a little bit more. It could even test 104. I don't want to see it break 104. But right now, 140, up 230. Looking good. Dow's up 80. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just get to the question I had here. Oh, that's a subscriber question. A uh, subscriber question, please, there. Eh? Uh, can you look at WHC? That's the chop spec. I'm using a three-day, five-minute chart. Do you see WHC trying to make a cup formation to 115? Do you have any opinion on this one, which seems much like GME? Yeah, thanks, uh, Eddie. So, Eddie, yeah, absolutely. This fits the same category. So, in other words, the, I, I, you just got to say, I don't care about fundies. I got nothing to do with this. It's just a price I'm following. It did make a peak C1, C2 in the five-minute chart at about 1 o'clock. Uh, when was that? That was on Friday at about the 113-ish level, 1. 115 round number high, it didn't break that. And then it pulled back sideways, went to the 90s, and suddenly it had the one big spike. Oh, that was the open today. Open today went to 121, uh, 121.80, and then it pulls back sharply. Yes, just treat this as a five minute chart. At this particular point, it's going sideways. It's got a peak A, it's actually got a peak B now. Uh, it seems like it wants to go a little higher if it goes a, a one penny above. Uh, 101.95, that's sauce leg C, and just treat it as, as, as something uh, I would not have any opinion whatsoever. I have nothing. I just follow the price so far. The MACD is good, stochastic is good. 
If we can get above that, it says it's going to leg C. Will it fill in the gap? I think it might fill in this candle. I don't think it'll go to the high of the day, but this candle is uh, a potential high. If it's able just to break into the 99, 80 area or 100, then you've got the candle with 110. That's a little high. I say 107 to 110 is a possibility, but it needs to break really soon. It needs to move higher. If it starts to break under 96, you just have to say, oops, rectangle sideways move can last a lot longer than my patience. And my so folks, you've got a big problem coming up. You've got no to You've got, uh, you've got Nickel Swim, Sea Roads, Bay Bike, Tom O'Brien. Let me just do this one more time. See here. You've got the Dow. I 